Hello, my name is Matt McGuinness. I'm a learning advisor at Edith Cowan University and today I'd like to talk about editing and proofreading skills. First of all, we're going to talk about what is editing and what is proofreading. Uh, we're going to move to why we edit and why we proofread and then most importantly talk about the top 10 editing and proofreading tips. So first of all, editing. What is editing? Well, editing is about improving a version of the text which is nearly completed. What does editing aim to do? Well, you're trying to improve the quality of the writing. You're trying to write your, your best English possible. You're trying to delete unimportant information and make stronger arguments. So editing is all about the quality of the writing and the quality of the sentences and the paragraphs. In contrast, proofreading is about finding errors. It's about finding errors in spelling, finding errors in punctuation, in capitalization, uh, subject verb agreement. These types of little errors which just make your work seem uh, unprofessional, unacademic. And the important thing is that during proofreading we are not too worried about the content. Content is not the focus during proofreading. So why do we do it? Well, lecturers have high expectations. They want accurate writing. Uh, lecturers want to have well-researched facts. They want to be able to trust the information. Uh, the ideas need to be written clearly with strong arguments and, and correct formatting. Now many students will make errors and sometimes the lecturers don't mention the errors. However, they are almost always noticed. In other words, people who correct your work will see the errors they might not always mention the errors, but they will notice them. So it's very important to uh, get this correct. So let's turn now to the top 10 editing and proofreading tips. And we, here we have a, a quick list. Computer spell check, enough time, print your work, a list of common errors, edit with problems in mind, read your work aloud, proofread backwards, understand the requirements, have a reference checklist and getting help as well. So these are the top 10 tips. So first of all, using a spell check. Well, a spell check is important. Of course, we always uh, use computers for most parts of our lives these days. However, there are some uh, differences, uh, particularly between British English and American English. And in Australia, we use British English. So for example, a word like realize is spelt with an S with British and Australian English. However, in America, it's spelt with a Z. Same with center, R-E in British English and E-R in American English. There are also words that can be spelt in different ways. So, uh, check with a C-K or Q-U-E, and no, K-N-O-W or N-O. What this means is that spell check will not pick up these types of errors. So you need to use a a human brain as well as your um, computer spell check. Some internet browsers also have better spell functions than others so um, you might want to experiment with different types of browsers. Second main tip allow enough time so you really need to have one week before you submit your essay which is basically editing and proofreading. So, for example, a four-week essay, uh, say uh, 2,000 words, or an essay which uh, has a 2,000 word limit, um, you might take about four weeks to complete. First first of all, you're just getting ideas and, and initial write, writing, writing and research, correcting and revising the first draft, and, and editing maybe in week three. And then week four, you should be purely editing and purely proofreading, looking for those final mistakes. Another good tip is print your work. So when you print it, you can easily find your language mistakes. Uh, you can find your content mistakes and formatting mistakes. And it helps people, helps other people look at your work correctly and, and see it. When everything's on the screen, sometimes things are, are difficult to edit and difficult to proofread. Keeping a list of common errors. So if you have common errors, you should keep them in a table or a chart. It's a bit like a, keeping a diary of your errors. The purpose, of course, is that you do not forget these errors and you do not make these errors again.
for example, on the left side you might have uh, the type of error. Uh, next you have the actual error itself, uh, for example, necessary with a poor, poor spelling, double C, the correction, and then the notes, what does it have? Well, the notes say that you have one C and two S's in a word like necessary. If you have a good list of errors, then you can commonly see what your mistakes are. When you're editing, you can edit with problem areas in mind. So if you know that you often make the same mistake, then you can always edit your work looking for that mistake. And this first point is an important one. If English is not your first language, you may often repeat the same mistake. You may be sitting there doing the same mistake for years and years and years. And yeah, what a shame. Okay, So it's important that you... you Realize what your common mistakes are and try to correct them. For example, you might have uh, subject-verb agreement or articles or prepositions. Um, your sentence length might be um, too too long. Uh, paragraphs are poor. Okay, so you need to ask a learning advisor to help you find the common errors um, and then proofread with these errors in mind. Reading aloud. This is a really good tip. So when you read your work out loud, you focus attention on your work. It, it helps you understand your sentences that are, that are too long. Um, helps you find grammar or vocab problems. And when you're reading it out loud, you can see what's clear and what's not clear. And it can help you to simplify your sentences. The seventh tip is proofreading backwards. So when you're proofreading backwards, you might start with the last sentence, say in the conclusion, and then move backwards. So you go into the main body and then into the introduction. When you're proofreading backwards, you can look at spelling mistakes, you can see the grammar mistakes, you can see each sentence independently, different from the way that you wrote it in the first place. And therefore, you'll be seeing your work with fresh eyes. Understanding requirements. So this is an important one so that your essay or report looks correct. Uh, what margins are required? What spacing is needed? What headers and footers are required? How should tables and charts be formatted? These types of questions are, are really important. Are bullet points acceptable? Uh, is a table of contents required? Is an appendix required? So a lot of the answers to these questions will be found in the unit outline. Referencing checklist. One of the important things, and one of the first things that a university lecturer will do, is we'll start with the end text references. When they receive a essay or a report, they'll look at the end text references and just make sure that they're formatted correctly. They'll also make sure that they have good sources, that the person has included good sources. That um, shows a lot about a student. Then the lecturer will typically go to the to the start of the text and go through and, and look at the in-text references as well. So a very important part of academic work. The different sources that are used, the different sources that are referenced, are they paraphrased or, or summarised correctly? If the direct quotation is used, are quotation marks used correctly? Uh, are all sources acknowledged? So does all the information come from different sources, different references? if the reference list is a complete and accurate. So so important to get that last reference list correct. And finally, getting help. So everyone can benefit from editing and proofreading help. Even uh, professional writers, even uh, lecturers and professors, everybody needs some sort of help. And for a, a regular student, this might involve uh, speaking to a learning advisor to find common errors. Uh, you might ask a family member or a friend to proofread your work, uh, or furthermore, you could ask other students to help you proofread. So, such an important skill and uh, essential that you get help from other people with fresh eyes.